What's going on guys? This is Vinyl like Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 countdown video, and today I figured I could go over 10 tips for beginners or just tips for people that are getting started with Borderlands 2. Now, for this video, I wanted to go a little bit beyond a lot of the general advice you get, such as matching the proper elements to the proper enemies or playing co-op to make the game easier, and instead talk about things or give advice that's a little more in-depth than what you might see in a more general guide. Also, you don't necessarily have to do everything that I mention here, but if you do some things and keep certain things in mind, you may find that you can make your very first playthrough a bit easier and a little bit less of a headache. Otherwise, and I guess with that further ado, let's go ahead and start with our first tip, which will go over what in my opinion is the easiest class to start. Even though this sort of comes down to subjective opinion and may depend on your level of experience with FPS type games, I would have to say that I think Maya is probably the easiest class to start with. This is because Maya has a pretty good action skill in the form of phase lock, which can lock enemies in mid-air and makes them much easier to take down with your guns. Beyond that, and depending on how you spec your skills, Maya offers a great amount of flexibility as putting points into her center harmony tree can make Maya an adept healer for co-op play, focusing on her motion tree can improve her all around, and her cataclysm tree can make her really great offensively. In fact, one of her skills from Cataclysm, which is called Cloud Kill, can be unlocked as soon as level 16 and is massively overpowered really early on. What Cloud Kill does is allows Maya to shoot an enemy, which spawns a gas cloud that that same enemy ultimately succumbs to. Given the enemies in question are mostly taking corrosive damage from Cloud Kill, Cloud Kill just so happens to be extremely powerful when going up against loaders. However, I think you'll find Cloud Kill is also very adept at taking out enemies that are normally vulnerable to fire attacks as well. Especially in normal mode, where pretty much every enemy can succumb to damage over time effects very easily. Ultimately, and with this in mind, I would recommend you pick Maya if you want an easy time in normal mode. Plus, when you do get to the higher levels, you can specialize in SMGs and get your hands on a number of the best guns in the game to pretty much wreck everything. Tip number two, the strongest class overall. If you're totally new to Borderlands 2 and you're looking to play the single strongest class, I would recommend Salvador the Gunzerker. This is because Salvador possesses a number of very useful skills like Inconceivable, which gives you a chance to fire shots that don't consume ammo, Money Shot, which allows the last shot in a magazine to deal a bunch of bonus damage, No Kill like Overkill, which applies excess damage that was used to defeat an enemy to the next enemy you fire at, or even something like Double Your Fun, which allows you to throw two grenades for the price of one. What makes Salvador ridiculous, though, is his gun Gunzerking action skill, which is easily the most powerful of all of the action skills across any character. Not only does this skill allow you to dual wield any weapon, but you regain a bunch of health upon its activation, as well as some passive damage reduction, health regeneration, and even some ammo regeneration, which makes this skill incredibly useful. On top of that, and assuming you reach the later parts of Borderlands 2, Salvador can more easily take advantage of certain unique weapons passive effects, which on top of all of the aforementioned things, makes Salvador even more ridiculous and the ideal character to solo raid bosses with, as you get a great combination of damage output as well as potential healing and damage boosting. He might be a little harder to start, but once you get a good skill synergy going on, Salvador is monstrous and will pretty much steamroll 99% of whatever is in front of you, provided that you have the right equipment and build. Tip number three, don't worry about your bar. Now, as you play Borderlands 2, you'll complete various challenges that will award you points, and after a certain number of points, you'll receive tokens to increase your bar or your badass rank. While I would recommend you allocate your points around max health, shield capacity, maybe reload speed and fire rate, as well as the trifecta of gun, grenade, and critical hit damage bonuses, the fact of the matter is, and at the end of the day, bar isn't really that important, especially really early on in the game. A lot of the bonuses you receive from bar are largely immaterial until you start to reach 10% for a given attribute. So for example, if you get 10% gun damage bonus from bar, that's actually somewhat useful. 
The problem is, by the time you reach that, you're probably going to be fairly far into the game with a moderately high level character, or maybe even two. The other problem with bar 2 is that your gains on a specific stat really start to diminish with time. Once you reach about 5% bonus with a given attribute, you'll start to gain about a 0.4% boost every time on top of that, which continues to decrease as you accumulate more percentage bonus. So, while the stat boosts bar can provide are nice and potentially infinite, I wouldn't put too much stock into it if you end up screwing anything up. Ultimately, just try to allocate to the proper bonuses, but if you didn't, don't worry about it. Tip number four. Avoid most bandit weapons and gear. While bandit does make some good things like rocket launchers, roid shields, and class mods, for the most part, a lot of the weapons that bandit makes are trash. Especially if they are of the non-unique variety, which is kind of unfortunate as Bandit just so happens to make weapons for every weapon type, with the exception of snipers. The problem with Bandit weapons is that their stats are lacking in pretty much every area, with the exception of magazine size. While I suppose you could make the argument that Bandit weapons don't require you to reload as much, when you do have to reload, it's usually going to take forever. On top of that, bandit weapons also tend to be fairly inaccurate and or have lousy recoil control, which can make aiming and successfully hitting enemies far more difficult than it really needs to be. I also just think, and in general, you're going to find that other manufacturers just make better or more desirable versions of the various different weapon types that bandit offers. For example, both Jacobs and Hyperion make better shotguns, Dahl and Vladov make better ARs, Dahl and Hyperion make better SMGs, and literally everyone makes a better pistol. Even if all of these manufacturers' weapons have their own unique properties that you have to get used to. What I will say about Bandit though is that they do make good, unique, and legendary gear. So when you get far enough into the game to get something like a Bada Boom, Jolly Roger, Bone Shredder, or Tatler, you'll find these items are pretty good. Plus, when you first defeat Captain Flint, you get the Tinderbox, which is actually a pretty nice unique fire pistol from Bandit that's viable up until you reach Sanctuary. In general though, just avoid most Bandit gear and you should be good. Tip number 5. Avoid most Assault Rifles. Now, Assault Rifles aren't necessarily bad, and there are definitely some really great ones out there that you should keep an eye out for, like the Jacob Skettling Gun, Doll Double Tap Rifle, as well as some great red text ones like the Vladov Hail or Torg Blaster. But, for the most part, Borderlands 2's Assault Rifles tend to be inferior when compared to pistols, SMGs, shotguns, and sniper rifles. The main reason for this is that Assault Rifles have an inherent critical hit penalty that's been applied to them. They are really the only weapon type as a whole to have this occur, and it just so happens to affect almost everything from non-uniques to uniques to legendaries and even the pearlescent and seraph rarity rifles. This crit penalty really can hold some of these weapons back from their potential, and the only ARs that aren't really affected by it are ones from Jacobs, which actually end up getting an additional improved multiplier when compared to their standard non-Jacobs brethren. You may find this isn't much of an issue really early on, however, as you start to get higher and higher in level, you may find that your assault rifles are just not hitting quite as hard as your other weapons are. Especially when it comes to criticals, as they become far more important as you progress into the later parts of the game. It stinks that assault rifles got balanced this way, but if you're really early on in the game, you'll probably be fine, just be aware of this as you increase in level. Tip number six. Get good with and keep an eye out for sniper rifles. While snipers take a bit more skill to use than most other weapon types, provided you can get a good handle on them to where you can score criticals fairly frequently, they actually tend to be pretty powerful during the game's first two difficulties. This is because sniper rifles possess a significant amount of base bonus, which on average allows your average sniper rifle to deal four times the base damage on a critical hit. In the case of Jacob Snipers, this can be up to five times as Jacob Snipers have superior base bonus when compared to snipers from other manufacturers. Not to mention that in the hands of a character like Maya, who can actually lock enemies in place, you should be able to pull off criticals with snipers fairly easily, which can make short work of most threats. 
In my humble opinion, the best snipers tend to come from either Jacobs, Vladoff, or Malawan. Obviously, Jacobs are great for their high base damage and high critical hit damage potential, Malawan are great due to their synergy with elemental damage bonus, and Vladov tend to be great due to their high DPS potential. And beyond that, try to keep an eye out for snipers featuring double barrels, or put more simply, the Vladov sniper barrel. Despite the lower base damage, these versions have higher fire rate and by extension DPS, which makes them very powerful when firing multiple shots into one enemy with really high health. Overall though, snipers are really powerful early on and should carry you to Ultima Voltator mode. After that, as long as you are playing Maya or Zero, you should find them very viable in Ultima Voltator mode with a proper build. Tip number 7. Take advantage of slag. Something that I wish I was more familiar with earlier on would have been the slag element. After all, the rest of the elements are pretty self-explanatory with fire weapons being good up against most enemies with red health bars, corrosive weapons being good up against enemies with yellowish health bars, and shock weapons being good up against enemies with shields, and fairly decent against both enemies with fire and corrosive vulnerabilities. Slag element, on the other hand, is a little less intuitive in how it works, but is incredibly powerful and useful once you understand it. Essentially, you use a slag weapon to turn enemies purple, then swap to another non-slag weapon, throw a grenade, or deal some other type of non-slag type damage to deal double the damage. In the right scenarios, and as you might expect, this can be very powerful, especially early on in the game. While it's true that you can get by without slag in your first couple playthroughs, you're going to find that it's way easier to get used to it now as Ultima Voltator mode, which is the game's hard mode for level 50 plus characters, makes slag a lot more essential. So if you can get used to slag now and acquire some decent slag methods, it will make the late game much easier. Especially since slag can allow you to deal up to triple the damage and last twice as long in Ultima Voltage mode when compared to the other difficulties. Overall though, just keep an eye out for slag guns and grenades. And also try to spec for skills on your characters that allow you to apply slag as most characters have at least one or two. Tip number 8. Complete side quests. This is what I would consider to be more of a general tip, but it is important to mention just in case you ever feel like you're stuck in this game. Not only can side quests be very enjoyable and allow you to uncover many of Borderlands 2's easter eggs, but most importantly, completing side quests can be a great source of experience as well, which can help you provided you're underleveled going into a particular area. Being underleveled will occasionally happen as you play through Borderlands 2, and by making sure that you're completing some side quests, you can keep your experience and your overall level up. Another hidden benefit of completing side quests are the quest rewards you can receive. It depends from side quest to side quest, but some of the better weapons, shields, and other gear you can acquire in this game can be had by simply completing side quests. For the super early game, completing the Bad Hair Day quest, for example, and turning in the fur to Sir Hammerlock will allow you to receive a Jacob Sniper Rifle, which can be a great weapon that early on. As you progress through the game, completing side quests can yield red text weapons, which often feature special abilities that make them superior to their non-unique counterparts. All in all, completing side quests is a good idea for a multitude of reasons, and if you find yourself stuck, go ahead and complete a few side quests so you can level up and maybe even get a few decent red text weapons. Tip number 9. Wait until max level to farm. Even though a big part of Borderlands 2 involves farming specific gear to become stronger, I would highly recommend that you not do this when you're first starting out for a number of reasons. First, Farming Borderlands 2's various mini-bosses for their legendaries can be a very time-consuming process. While it's not as crazy as it used to be during Borderlands 2's first couple years of life, it could still take you quite a while to farm, say, Savage Lee for that unkempt herald, or Bull for a fastball grenade. Second, the other reason that I would recommend avoiding farming initially is because your farmed weapons will quickly start to become underleveled for the enemies that you start to come across. If you manage to get a level 7 unkempt herald or something like that, you may find that you really can't get much use of it after level 12 or 13, 
And I can almost guarantee that by level 20, generic green weapons will perform better. With both of these things in mind, I think you'll find that you're much better off putting off farming until you reach higher levels. That way, when you do spend two hours farming for some of the better legendary weapons, you're not going to have to do it all over again because the weapons you just got are suddenly underleveled for the enemies that you're fighting. The one exception to this rule that I would mention would be for farming quest reward items, which don't take nearly as much time to get. However, even then, you're still going to have issues with these items getting out leveled for the enemies that you're fighting. So, don't focus on trying to get something with the best parts or prefix until you reach maximum level. As a general rule though, wait until you're at maximum level before you start to farm legendaries. And for our final tip, tip number 10, golden keys and the golden chest. Now, if you're unfamiliar with either of these things, golden keys are a secondary currency that's used to open the golden chest that's located in Sanctuary. While the keys themselves can be somewhat difficult to acquire, the golden chest itself tends to be a great source of high quality loot that's typically of purple or e-tech rarity. On top of that, most of the loot that drops tends to match the level of the player as well, making the gear that you can obtain this way superior to many other items that drop in game, which tend to be of green rarity and maybe even 2-3 to three levels below your current level. So as you can imagine, the golden chest can be a great source of some really nice weapons and gear really early on if you're having difficulties in finding really nice items. Of course, the catch is, is that you'll need to find golden keys. Unfortunately, golden keys can't be unlocked in game. However, if you sign up for a shift account, you can enter a bunch of shift codes that will give you plenty of these keys. I'll leave a link in the video's description to a website that documents a bunch of working shift codes for Borderlands 2, so you can visit that if you're looking for some codes. But in general, there usually seems to be about 4 timed codes that are available at any one time that yield a combined 20 keys in total, which is great for people that are starting out and want access to some of the better gear that the golden chest provides. Ultimately, the golden chest is a great way to get some decent loot as you're leveling, so don't be afraid to get some keys and open the chest a couple of times every 3-4 to four levels or so, so you can get some quality gear. Especially during your very first playthrough. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. I figured this could be a pretty fun video to do given that Borderlands 2 VR is about to come out and while not all of the advice I've given here is going to carry over, I suspect that most of it will. So, if you are playing Borderlands 2 VR right now, let me know in the comments if this guide helped you at all. As always, like this video if you liked it, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next video, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.